Are you looking for a free online grammar checker? Then stick around. This is Self Publishing with Dale, where you learn to publish books that sell and build an unstoppable brand. Before we jump into the content for today, I want to know if you've got a preferred free online grammar checker. If so, drop it right on down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you would like to know what my recommendations are based on your needs, make sure that you stick around to the end of this video. It wasn't too long ago that I posted a review of the online grammar checker known as Grammarly. And boy, I did not expect for it to take off like it did, so I thought that we'd return back to today and focus primarily on one of the items that they have in there, which is the free online grammar checker. But who exactly is Grammarly intended for? People saving time. If you are a busy online entrepreneur, then chances are very likely you need to find out ways that you can optimize your workflow. Grammarly is one of those things that I and others use. Let me just put it to you point blank. I am a touch typer. I try to type as quickly as possible and I don't bother to slow down and hit the backspace or delete just to make sure that all of my text is perfect. And one of the worst things to do is to go back and have to edit line by line by line when all I need to do is just clean it up for some typos and grammatical errors. This can work really well in things like social media, from Facebook to YouTube to Twitter, or even on things like this YouTube channel. Clarify your communication. Every now and then I find myself at a loss for words. Sometimes I want to say one way and then it comes out another. So Grammarly is able to clean that up and clarify exactly what I'm shooting for. And I don't need to get too over wordy. I don't need to get too basic. It really helps me dial that in. If English is a second language. If English is your second language, then chances are likely Grammarly is going to help you really dial in exactly what you want to say without sounding really stilted or a little bit off key. Dyslexia. This one I was not aware of until I had actually launched the Grammarly review video not too long ago. A few people had commented that they use Grammarly because they have dyslexia, which means that they're having some words in the wrong place or some of the spellings are completely off kilter. So Grammarly is able to kind of help them dial in exactly what they want to say and not feel ashamed for what they have in dyslexia. But what exactly comes with the free version of Grammarly? Obviously it has its limitations, but you're in luck if you really don't want to spend any money. The free version of Grammarly really is not all that bad. The Chrome browser extension. Much like I'd mentioned before, Grammarly actually works on various social media platforms. I most often use it through email, through Facebook, through Twitter, and so on. Grammarly for Microsoft Office. This is PC only, so those of you that are Mac users, they have yet to address this issue. I'm not going to revisit this one quite simply. Grammarly, you need to really pony up the expenses and figure out a way that you can address how you can get Grammarly support on things like Keynote or Microsoft Office on Mac. But the plugin is actually pretty nice. I'm really happy with it. My only reservation when it comes to the plugin for Microsoft Office is that if you end up making a change through Grammarly itself, what ends up happening is you can't undo that change. So you can't just hit the Control Z and expect for it to undo. It will not do it. It goes away permanently. So be very careful when using the plugin with Microsoft Office. Online account and cloud storage. If you are looking for easy ways to store some of your manuscripts or even just simple emails and communication, then Grammarly's free version is for you. You can literally just upload it, check it on their website, and download the manuscript for yourself and publish it where you need to or use it however you want. The desktop app. 
Admittedly, I have the desktop app, but it isn't too often that I utilize it. it quite frankly, if it's on the desktop, then chances are likely I can just go ahead and jump online and get over into Grammarly.com itself and utilize it there. So I really don't have an opinion one way or another of their desktop app. I definitely would love to hear if you've utilized it before and what your experience has been so far. The Grammarly mobile app. Oh my goodness, I did not realize this was an option available and I had actually found this out through Twitter because Grammarly hit me back and was like, hey, we actually do have a mobile app. So I installed it on my iPhone and it didn't last more than a day before I deleted it. Unfortunately, it just seems real clunky and it stopped me up quite a bit and its autocorrect function is just it leaves something to be desired. It's not what I've come to expect in Grammarly services. Now, I'm not knocking Grammarly for this. I just feel like I'm slowed down by the process and I'm already happy with the autocorrect function that I have in my iPhone. Of course, with it being free, yes, there are limitations, but there are a few features that you can come to anticipate. Critical grammar and spelling checks. Hey, this is a given. Everybody kind of knows this one. They're gonna go through and fix up those typos, and if you just have small sentence errors, it'll clean that up. Get performance stats via email. You can have this turned on or off when it comes to notifications, but essentially, as you are using Grammarly, it's going to collect some of the data and it's going to share with you how you're doing compared to other people that are utilizing the app. I've used this little feature for a little while, but after a bit, as some of you are aware, emails tend to kind of get backed up inside my email inbox, so I have to be super selective with what I'm receiving. And so, sadly, I opted out of the email notifications. But that's it. It's really no frills. It's free. It's free for a reason, you know, and uh, you're going to get some great features, and you can't beat free. So why exactly would you need premium features? Hear, hear me out. I understand this is all about talking about the best free online grammar checker, but we need to at least visit premium because there's so many people that go, why do I want to spend X amount of dollars to get the premium feature when I have this free one? Of course, I don't need to tell you that you already have the same features that you have inside the free model. That's, that's just a given. They also have advanced checks for punctuation, grammar, context, and sentence structure, vocabulary enhancement suggestions, genre-specific writing style checks, plagiarism detector, which is this is a huge one for me, and it actually saved my tail. I'll put a link to the video where I discuss how it did in the description down below. But this plagiarism detector checks more than 16 billion web pages. And how the subscription model works is you can either do it annually, quarterly, or monthly. Obviously, you're gonna get the biggest price break, and this is one I always shoot for in the annual model. If you want to test it out, go for the monthly model. Just remember that you're gonna to want to hit the unsubscribe feature before the month is over, so that way you aren't billed month in and month out. But is Grammarly Premium necessary? This is gonna be largely dependent on your goals. I know that for me, I would rather just pony up the expenses for the annual membership, so that way I get all of the features that I need to and not get stopped up by small problems and typos and mistakes that they otherwise say, hey, there's a problem, but you need to upgrade. Just tell me what I have done wrong so I can get it fixed and I can move on with my life. I'd recommend, at the very least, if you haven't tried the Grammarly free model, try that first before you do the upgrades to the premium model because you have nothing to lose and you can at least see exactly what you're doing wrong and how you can fix it with the free model. And furthermore, they'll tell you there's gonna be some mistakes, they just won't unveil those mistakes to you through the free model. Last but not least, this is something that I get a lot of people saying, is Grammarly safe? So get out your tinfoil hats, let's go ahead and talk conspiracy theories here. A lot of people believe that, well, if you give Grammarly permission to do posts on your behalf, and this is something that's gonna pop up when you're using the Chrome browser extension, then are they going to start snapping pictures of you? Will they start using your camera? Will they start posting on your behalf? Well, folks, calm down, 
take off your tinfoil hat for just a minute and hear me out because I'm a bit of an optimist when it comes down to something like this. They're asking permission to make posts on your behalf because here's the deal. You're first allowing them to see what you are doing and typing in real time. The next thing is they're gonna offer suggestions on how you can fix those things in real time. And then once you agree to those things that are gonna be fixed, they do that on your behalf in real time. So with all that being said, that's why they ask for permissions to post on your behalf. Furthermore, what they're also doing is they're gonna be tracking your performance history. Much like I mentioned before, something that's available to you is the email notifications to let you know how your performance is based on other people that are using the Grammarly app as well. Now again, I'm not really big into that specific option anymore. I don't care how mine fares against other people, but it's kind of a nice little feather in your cap when you first start using Grammarly's app. But is Grammarly safe? Yes. If you are the type of person that really needs to get a lot of your workflow optimized and things going at a rapid pace, then Grammarly is definitely safe and it is for you. If you're ready to go ahead and get your hands on the free access to Grammarly, of course you can head on over to my affiliate link at selfpublishingwithdale.com slash Grammarly. Once you get access there, you're probably wondering how do I use the Grammarly app to really get the most out of all the features. I actually have a full video called the Grammarly tutorial that you want to check out over here and I'll see you on over in that video right now. To install the free internet browser extension, simply log into your Grammarly account and select the apps option on the left side panel. Click the install hyperlink.